Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And what a journey it is today. We are going to rewind the clock 400 years. How about that? And we are going to talk to a lovely, lovely lady. And it, just to be sure that you know, I am talking to my cousin. My first cousin, or that is, yeah, one of my first cousins. And she, she is in New York City. And she is, she broadcasts on, she's going to have to tell me, but it's public radio in New Jersey. And um, this is Sheila Anderson. And we have, we're going to talk about uh, racism in America because we come from a long line of black people, mixed people in America. So, and then she's got the protest going. And when we first tuned in, it was seven o'clock New York time and they were banging outside for the first responders. So there's a lot to get to. So Sheila. Well, hello, 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 my dear cousin. How are you? Aloha. I, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I am so glad that you agreed to do this. So, well, thanks for thanks for asking me. And and I've really been since we had the conversation and since the invitation, you know, I, I've really I've been giving us a lot of thoughts and um, you know, I Oh, oh, you you were saying uh, I'm on jazz radio. Yes, I, I'm on WBGO. It's in Newark, Newark Public Radio, or public radio station, a jazz station. And, you know, we've been talking about it, about how, how do we as a station um, sort of address the, the, the situation that we're in now um, with the protests and, and, all, and, and, you know, there's so much, so much jazz was born out of protest. Yes. And when you fast forward to um, the, during the cabaret laws and how that, how it impacted jazz in a negative way, um, uh, they, you had to have a cabaret card to perform. They wouldn't allow uh, saxophones and certain instruments so musicians couldn't play in clubs. And they could have you. They could take. They they took away your cabaret card for the minor of of infractions, and including Thelonious Monk. Uh oh, <coughs> excuse me, Thelonious Monk for one. Uh, Billy Holiday, um, and others. So you look at, and then going fast forward to the '60s, and all the music that was. <coughs> oh my goodness. Now all of a sudden I get I get a dry throat, and uh, <coughs> oh my, this is embarrassing. <laughs> it's like okay, uh, and then you look at the '60s and the protest music that came out of the '60s, um, the Freedom Freedom Now Suite, uh, Max Roach and Abby Lincoln, Sonny Rollins, uh, John Coltrane wrote Alabama. Uh, after the bombing of the, the girls in in uh, in the church in, in Birmingham, and then you have songs like "Fables for Fathers" that Mingus wrote in reaction to um, fathers that racist uh, uh, governor in uh, I think it was Georgia. So you so you know fast forward, you know it's like you know you have younger musicians writing about. You know Trayvon Martin and writing songs and in, in response to what they're experiencing uh, racially, so it doesn't end, and no. nor does obviously. Well, um, but if you want to go back, um, the gospel uh, songs were in response to slavery. You know. Yeah. Um, Yes. Swing low, sweet chariot. Well, she's singing, coming for to carry me home. That was instructions on how, where to go. It, all of our music has been tied to, um, from slavery up to today. 
and I've been glued to the television for a week now, which is something I don't usually do. Yes. But me too. Uh, yeah. Me too. <laughs> and and I heard all kind of music across the country in response yes. because um, Sweet Honey in the Rock. What's her name? Oh, uh, Bernice. 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 Yes, mm -hmm. Bernice. And I were we were part of SNCC a hundred years ago, and she says that 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 is the music it that um, comes from us. That's who we are as black people. That is our very being, and so it expresses through all of the stages of our last four hundred years of being here, and it it's. Thank God we have that. And yeah. and it's forever. It lasts forever. Um, you know, I, I, I thought I had a conversation with some friends a couple of years ago, and we we're talking about that and, and how, you know, when when you know slave the slave came from different countries. I mean, spoke different languages, had different religions and all of that. And then they took away the drum because they had drums to communicate. But what they couldn't take away is our voice. And, voice. and I yes. was saying, when, when you, um, I can sit around with a bunch of Black people and we could have a nonverbal conversation just with a, yes. or grunts, or a, and we know exactly. exactly. Yes. <laughs> I mean, and we could have a whole conversation without saying a word. And, and I, I think music, song, that. You saw yes. that these last week across the country, you could see that no one had to tell them, do this, do this. They knew instinctively, instinctively how to do that. Let, let me roll way back here just to give our audience. Incidentally, you can send in your questions and there's a link down here for anybody that wants to participate. Now, for Sheila and me, if you go way back, one of our early grandfathers, at least as far as we can go, are you ready for this audience? Was Civil War, Confederate Civil War General John Bell Hood, which is why we have a maiden name Hood to this day. He sired two slave children, took them away from their mother, gave them to his sister so that she raised them as houseboys which is how they got this great education. And like I said, we're, to this day, we still have that name, Hood, John Bell Hood. Now, for anybody that's watching, don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, this is not intended to be racist. And I don't mind that we have a white general on the line, but why did we have to have the stupid one? I mean, all the men in the world, He's a general and he loses his whole tribe. Why? You know? And then they name us the fort after him. You know? oh, right. Uh, it's like, here, why? why? <laughs> right, right, right. You know? And, and then we, we had, are We are the American story, <laughs> the Black American history. We, we, we are living history, absolutely. And um, we have a grandmother, one of the many great, great grandmothers who was Native American and she was taken in by the hoods by this time they are, have their own families and to take her off of the trail of tears. And if you look at the um, ancestry.com, she has an American name, but Uncle Ernest, uh, little Dolly's father, Uncle Ernest used to tell me stories about her and he said, Oh, he was crazy about her, his grandmother because she had hiding places and little children love hiding places. It was only maybe four or five years ago that I discovered what that meant. And she, when they took her off the Trail of Tears, the bounty hunters were looked for her so that, that the family, the Hoods, had created hiding places for her. And needless to say, Uncle Ernest was thrilled because little children like hiding places. And so when you look at all of these things, and Andrew Jackson was a real ass 
to create bounty hunters and to move all those Native Americans off the land that he wanted. When you look at yeah. where we've come and you feel it inside, there is still a hurt. There's nothing we can say, nothing we can do. And that is why you see all of those people all over the world protesting because it, there's a hole. There's a yes. hole there. Yes. And, and the thing is, you know, as, I mean, I mean, I've been talking race, you know, all my life. Oh, yes. You know, and having gone to, uh, well, I went to boarding school and Catholic school and private school. And, you know, so I, I went to school with mostly whites. And, um, you know, it was, there was always the, you know, question or assumptions, you know, like, you know, I, I was not on scout i mean not, i mean i wasn't um i mean my parents had my parents had to pay <laughs> so i wasn't i didn't have to do work study you know so it's like so when i find out my father's a lawyer my mother's a teacher you know it's like well i don't come from the ghetto because i didn't really understand you know so you hear things like i hear things like oh you're the whitest black person i know and you know all that ignorant stuff so i've had to have these conversations you know for so long but you know when people white people say well i'm not racist and and my people weren't slave owners and all that it said it does it doesn't matter because it's the, the dna it just gets passed down and passed down and passed down and when you think about america when it started it was some some wasps some white anglo-saxon protestants who pretty much said look this is for us. Oh, if you couldn't vote if you didn't own land. Look right. at how they 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 come up with the senators. And and the reason why why there's two in each state, they weren't even elected. They were appointed. No, they weren't elected, they were appointed. That was yes. an afterthought. Yeah. And and they included and you could buy it. If you had wealth, you, you buy bought yourself a, a, a right. senator. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so you had slaves counted as property because I mean, as people, three fifths of a three fifths of a person, because the 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 number of senate senators were based on because there were there were fewer people than cattle in like Montana, yeah. you know. So they said, well, that's not going to work. So we've got to so let's count the slaves, and then therefore that's how the population. So that's why somebody like you know South Dakota has two senators. And California has two senators. It doesn't make yes, any sense in modern sense day, but it wasn't. No. It wasn't meant for everyone. It wasn't to meant to. Anything. No, it wasn't meant to. to no. <laughs> and and no, then when you have the Irish come over, they were shanty Irish. Then the Italians come over, and they're the Wops, and the Chinese are the Chinks. And then all of a sudden, all these people coming over here, ethnics. They were ethnics and looked down on. But then when 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 they saw that these ethnics were like banding together with 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 black folks. They said, "Oh, wait a minute! Now this ain't gonna work." Well, that, so well, y'all gonna be white, <laughs> and they're gonna be black, and and we're gonna take the Irish and we're going to make them the cops. We're gonna be they're gonna be the ones who were the slave catchers. You know, it, it it's 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 a system. This is this is what racism is. It is a system that is built to keep people subjugated. It's and separate. not, you know, you know, and yeah, so that when pe right, so so people don't understand, you know, and, and everyone throws around the word racist. Oh, you're racist, or you're a reverse racism. That that doesn't even exist. You can be a bigot, you can be prejudiced, but we can't be. What is reverse racism? We're not a control the system. <laughs> if we know. were, those cops wouldn't be killing black folks every week. If we oh, were, into, oh, I, mean, yes. I mean, you know, I mean, they're there to keep the system intact, they, uh, yes. which is to and keep the minorities, the black folks down and keep and the it's white part folks of, up. It's built into the system. Yes. You know, the, yes. the mayor, I mean, it's no different you elect from the a party. Mayor, yeah, you elect a mayor and the police department is under the mayor. Most of the right. time, anyway, in Hawaii, in Hawaii, when it became a state, they created the 
police department and the board of water supply were not under the mayor because they thought when it's written that they thought, oh, well, if there's a rogue mayor, they can turn off the water and turn out the police. So each of them are separate, but, and they have a commission, but the mayor still gets to put his hands in the, the till, you know, they get to get to play the game. Now, the idea of creating them separate was a great idea, but after, you know, a hundred years that it's kind of morphed into something else. But the idea was good. Yeah, well, I, when you look at, you know, I, I just found out the other day that there are 38,000 cops in New York. Yes. The largest in, in the country. I didn't realize the 38,000. But the, the, what people are, are really reacting to a couple of things that the police has, has morphed into. You know, that they given police cops, they're, they're making cops military. And, and the union is very strong. That's why it's hard to convict these cops when they're, when they, when they're killing, killing folks. There's, there's all, you know, they get part of the funding, you know, that, that could be going to communities, but they get funding, federal funding, state funding, for what? To buy more military tanks. And I mean, they're, they're, they're dressed like they're literally going to war. No more, you know, men and women in blue. They're in, you know, black and damn near khakis. And that <laughs> yes. is, again, part of the system that needs to be corrected. It needs to be adjusted or corrected or thrown out. Make them, yeah, make them go back to walking the beat. The blue shirt gang, as they are called. <clears throat> yes, yes. Yeah, the blue shirt gang. And uh, the... It is the system, uh, you know, I hate to say that so-and-so is a racist or so-and-so other than the, the orange man in the White House. I don't mind saying that one's racist. But uh, anyway, somebody's in trouble. I, the helicopter's right overhead and ah. we're only uh, half a mile from the ocean. So when you hear the helicopter oh. like that, somebody's in trouble in, oh. out there. That's too bad. It's a beautiful day, so it's a great day to be out. Uh, what was I getting ready to tell you? I don't know. You're so talking about the, 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 the old folks, they lose it. <laughs> no, you're, you're talking about the system and, and, yes. and how, you know, it's basically, this is, the system is what keeps them, you know, yes. getting stronger. I mean, it, it's it's true. And, and the thing, I'll never forget when de Blasio first got elected and he had made a comment because he has biracial children and that you know I forgot what the incident was but a black person either gotten beaten or killed something happened and he said how he has to give a talk to his son you know about how to behave you know like when you black fathers give to their black sons you know the boss is white and the reason why I mention it is because when he was inaugurated, the police turned their backs on him because oh, they wow. were so upset that he would say something like that about them, which is basically, you know, yeah, the, the cops are, you know, beating up, you know, black guys for no black kids for no reason. And they literally turned their back on him. I mean, that was unbelievable, unbelievable. So he's had a problem with the cops from the very beginning and the union is so strong. I mean, the rumor is people say, well, you know, they probably threatened him. Actually, his daughter was arrested on Saturday night um, at the protest, but uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's the culture, it's, it's the culture. And, and people have finally, I mean, there have been protests after every, uh, you know, uh, Amadou Diallo, there was a protest. Um, Abner Louima, Eric Garner, a protest. This is New York City, I mean. Yeah. Um, but nothing was ever done, really, I mean, until now. So I think it's just between the pandemic and the murder of George, um, it's like a perfect yeah. storm. And, and now everybody's had enough. 
It's like and, we have to yeah. use, and then of course the orange one, as you say, <laughs> um, perpetuating more violence and more. You know, when 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 he said to um, I forget which police force, oh yeah, I want to see more of that. Rough them up, rough them up. Yeah. This throw them in the car. <laughs> so he's basically telling them to the cops, yeah, go ahead, well, rough when, them up, make it hurt. Yeah, one of his first. Uh, town hall or whatever those rallies are he has and the chief of police from Minneapolis was one of the speakers and he was thrilled to death do it do oh, it yeah. Minneapolis okay uh, I thought was, I, that's what I thought yeah. yeah I think he's been replaced but the point is that well, I thing. think it was recent. I think it, it was, was after the it murder because, recent. yeah, yeah, because they also found him, you know, in like Nazi garb or something like that at yes. one of Trump's mm -hmm. rallies or something like that. So, you know, he's he's gone. But look at how long it took, and 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 it took something like this to to make so the fact that and even when you think about the cop who, well, they um all four of them are now arrested. Um, but the main one, Shevin, or Shiva, however you say his name, he had already had um, thing uh, citations against him. He had already, for years, they yes. knew. Yes. And they let him stay on the force. And the guy, um, Tutau, whatever, I think that's his, his name, he too was suspended for like two years because of, um, I think, some civil suits against him. But they let them stay. They let these people stay. The one, um, I think Abner Luima, or one of them, one of the cops um, that roughed him up, uh, he, had, he had also had citations yep. against him. Now, I think. For, for the civil. I think I'm the difference. Saying they allow them. Yeah. I think the difference in what happened last Memorial Day and any other day is this magic little thing that everybody has in their pocket. This this little thing called a magic, this phone. And yes, everybody was out but, taking pictures. And right, but, but, that is why if that made a difference that the whole world got to see. You All of those names that you mentioned, nobody got to see. So the police- Well, Eric Gardner, they did. They, they did. did. Eric they did. Gardner, that was the one, I can't breathe, you know, yes. in Sad Island. No, we did watch the that. One that was yeah. thinking, but check this out. The guy who took the video, he's in jail. They of arrested course. him. They of arrested course. him for something. And he's in jail for four years. And he's the one that took the video. Yes. And so they, they, they that's why people were worried about the young lady that took the- um, I'm still um, worried about her. Because you know, cops will retaliate, so yes, it'll come and she won't even know what happened. There's and there's a lot of people that took pictures. So, I, I heard an interview with one man, and they he took some pictures, and then he said he stopped because he was in a car, he stopped and went in another direction because he was afraid for himself that he had this ammunition, you know, this, and then he had to drive somewhere else because he was afraid for himself. But you know, the thing that really blows my mind is how the fact that, that not only a young lady, but other people videotaping and how casual, how casual they were to just continue to, to it kill him posing. Yeah. down there. And as so though, because the confidence and the arrogance that nothing would happen to them. That is the, that's the mentality. Everyone says, oh, you know, they're not all bad cops and, and, you know, there's some, you know, bad apples. Well, the bad apples are ruining the whole force because again, it, it comes from the top. They mm -hmm. felt very comfortable sitting there, just killing the and, guy and it was okay. Yeah, and okay, it's, okay. it's kind of like, I dare you, videotape yeah. me, nothing's gonna happen to me. And it's the whole system you know, the original uh, prosecutor came down with some, oh, well, we need more evidence. And then the, um, what do you call it? The, when they autopsy, even that was screwy that there was no evidence in the original autopsy. And so the, yeah. whole, the whole thing is, comes together 
and yeah. it well, makes look them at, feel look at um um Aubrey uh in, in Georgia, the one who was jogging and shot. Right. The original right. prosecutor was friends with the guy, apparently. So it's like, but again, if there hadn't the thing is about that one, which is interesting, is there hadn't the video the, the the lawyer for the guy that took the video put the video out because he thought it was going to prove the case that um, they had not done anything wrong by shooting them, by shooting yeah. them. Like, so if we hadn't seen that video, we wouldn't have known. And, but these are the, the guy that took the video may or may not have been in cahoots with these guys, but yet to think, now that's an arrogance. It's like, well, look, here's the video. He, 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 was, he was running because he was a thief. And so we killed him because he... Uh, <laughs> yes, certainly. I, you know, racism is house. a disease. In an empty house, is, right? Uh, um, racism is, is a disease. I personally think that they... they we're looking to have some fun that day, just like they, you know, lynching folks from trees back in the day. And they said, "Oh, well, we see that this, this. Oh, there, there goes some somebody black." But so, yeah, my that mother was premeditated. Yeah. My mother was in the '30s, and in uh, Fisk University in Tennessee, and she says that every weekend there was a lynching just outside of town, and it was a festive occasion every weekend and that was nashville in in the 30s yeah yeah yes now we have we're, we're down to two minutes really so, yes fast right <laughs> what <laughs> yes yeah we'll have to do it again and okay. um but let's let's talk about in these last two minutes what has to, where do we go from here i listened to obama who was beautiful as always, uh, but where do we go from here? What 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 can we look forward to? What can we do now? For most of us, there's an election. Well, all of us in the United States, there's an election. But now, for me, I think we need to look all the way down the ballot. Okay, so we got two people at the top, but if we don't elect the sheriff and the the mayor and the city council and the dog catchers and all the way down, we are, we're not going to make change. So give me your thoughts right. for this last minute. Well, I think I, I've been watching a lot of young people talking and I think we have to get, bring back social engagement. And, and cause I, I, I knew when I was born, there were two things I had to do in life. I had to vote and I had to go to college. That I, right. I knew that I was going to yeah, college. Well, I mean, I had that, to was, vote. that was right. just, Right. That was what that was a thing you just knew because your parents had done it. Yes. And then it was a it was a priority. And I think now people need to understand you're right. It's not just the top, it's down ballot. <coughs> oh my goodness. So that's what we have to do is engage young people into the process again. <coughs> oh Ooh, my goodness. That's, that's not good. Yeah. I know. And, and like speaking of down ballots, I have couldn't resist this one. Uh, Congressman Stephen, what's his name? King? Oh, yeah. Got to wrap himself up in his white sheet and go to bed. <laughs> I'm so happy. Everybody's happy about that. So, you know what? <laughs> one at a time. Knock them down one at a time. One at so, a yes, time. Yeah. That was a good one. So, definitely get good. engaged. We got to get <laughs> yeah. engaged. And, Join the NAACP and, and these other organizations. Oh, the NAACP has a call coming up in a half hour. And, okay. and if you can get on to the call, it's in a half hour. Okay. Uh, and Absolutely. Yeah. So that's what I think going forward. I mean, I think people are pretty much awake now, uh, especially young people say, well, you know, we don't have to take this anymore. I mean... Like we're going to get involved. I think now that um, it's kind of like the '60s again. You know, young folks are just like, okay, we don't take this anymore. We're going to get engaged, and we're going to learn, and we're going to march, and we're going to run for office. And I think that it'll be a better, 
it'll be a better world, at least for maybe another 30 years. <laughs> so, but I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be positive, trying to be positive. But I think I, I am actually hopeful. These young folks are really on the ball. So I, I yeah. And I, what I was impressed yeah. with now, I talked to a friend yesterday and we were 15 when we started out in this march, Me too. this movement. And um, we were so glad to see, because at times we felt like we were alone, and to see this movement of people of all colors, all races, yes. to be out there. Yes. And around the world, the, yep. the support around the world. Yeah. And everybody just, sees yeah. how messed up America is. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, totally. It's it's um it was heartwarming. So I, <laughs> I'm I'm feeling hopeful. And I'm going to go back to being glued to my TV for another day or so and then I'll have to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, my husband is a black man and we have five black sons and four boys, men who are grandsons, and now one great-grandson. And it's scary watching yeah. it. Now, of course, being cut in this cocoon here, uh, I didn't see all of going on in America. But when this happened, I thought of all of those men, all of my children and grandchildren, and that's scary. Because only one, okay, one lives here and all the rest of them are in, on the mainland. And that really scared me to death. And that's, I think that's how our, um, our grandparents felt, you know, in Indiana, wondering if their sons or even daughters would come back alive. Would they yes. get snatched up? Would they be now, lynched? Okay, and just to close, speaking of which, my father, your uncle, was murdered in March 1964 in, uh, on the Eastern Shore of Maryland by a white sheriff. And uh, it was hard for me to deal with it. And I still have, watching this, all of that came up again. Um, and of course, nothing happened. Nothing happened. And they kept his, and I know the sheriff did it because the sheriff kept the body. And when when they finally found him, it was all deteriorated. I mean, and the man, oh the sheriff God. knew him, knew him. And then when he couldn't hide any longer, when the insurance company and everybody else came looking for him, that's when he finally surrendered. But nothing happened. Wow. Nothing. <laughs> that's that's sad. It's sad. It's sad. It but yeah, it's sad. Okay. All right. So oh. They're telling me I've got to stop. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Aloha. Love you. Love Aloha. You <laughs>